In this episode, Dayton shares his testimony, talks battle rapping on 106 and Park, and almost getting signed to Eminem's Shady Records, and then over a decade later, being a part of a Shade 4-5 cipher. Additionally, we discuss dating in your 30s, battling depression, and why he thinks Christian hip-hop ain't dead. Dayton also raps and breaks down We Fight, Snot Rag, Hall of Martyrs, and Wake Up in the four-song breakdown. I am Galika Brown, and this is Sound Seekers Presents Testimony, a Musician Story. Yeah, so my name is Triple D, aka Dayton, um, to kind of take my long testimony and just condense it. Um, I grew up in a household where uh, my, my father and mother were present. My dad was a professional disc jockey, a DJ, and um, they were lovers of music. So I grew up uh, listening to all different types of music. My parents were very Americanized. So though they were both Puerto Rican, um, they really didn't know Spanish just like myself. Um, they were extremely Americanized. Growing up in the projects, you know, they got acquainted and hip to hip hop. My dad, uh, was actually one of the first DJs in the city to bring hip hop from New York to the city of Newark. Oh. Um, so I'm told, I wasn't there to witness it, but they say, yeah, your dad was one of the first people to spin hip hop. So um, hearing hip hop throughout the household, um, of course I grew to love it. It became a dream of mine, a dream that I would eventually pursue uh, when I became a teenager. I always flirted with it, and uh, to my little friends on the block, they would say I was great, but outside of my friends on my block, I wouldn't share it. So um, when I, I finally got the courage to start sharing my rhymes, um, I took it really serious. The, the reception I got from everybody else was like a high for me. It gassed me, so I, I pursued that high. Um, uh, eventually, you know, making music, I got into the battle scene to kind of increase my buzz. With that, that got me on 106 and Park Freestyle Friday. I became champion on that. That opened up many other doors to label meetings. Uh, there was one label that I, I um, that, that comes to mind that I, I specifically wanted to sign with them, and that was Shady Records. At the time, Eminem was on top of the world. Um, they started courting me. I was taking meetings back and forth with Shady Records. And in that process, just uh, things started to change. I feel like the Lord started to, started to call me uh, through many different angles. One being a friend of mine who left my group. I had a little group and, and he started to, uh, to, to, to serve the Lord. So he would witness to me a relationship that I was in with someone who was engaged. They started to witness to me because they were in a backslidden state. Um, and it just got to the point where, you know, as I'm accomplishing these little goals of mine, um, I, I was left unfulfilled. I saw that they just did not sustain the happiness would last for a little while for a season and, and it was fleeting. And what it did was open my eyes to, how much of a, of a fluke this all is because it's supposed to make me feel this way. I assumed it would just be it and it didn't do that. So with all my accomplishments and success um, and, and them just leaving me unfulfilled, I decided like, yo, God is calling me. Let me just finally submit. And uh, this happened in 2007. I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and I haven't looked back ever since. That's amazing. So that was really, really condensed. Um, in in the midst of that, there was um, the story with meeting Pam from Total as mm -hmm. well, right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how that really influenced you since she was coming from the music industry that you were trying to get into? Yeah, so with Pam from Total, um, I, I entered into this, to this competition. And this competition, I was a champion in it. And now they had us come back because MTV was interested in filming a pilot. They wanted to broadcast this on the network. So while we filmed the TV pilot, um, I absolutely slayed it. Home run, murdered it. Probably my best performance I ever gave in my life. It just didn't even look like competition. 
So my friend seeing that, and he's in the process of witnessing to me, and he started witnessing to me in like 2004. This is like 2006 now. So it's years. Okay. Man, he, he had to pull a, a trick up his sleeve. He had met Pam uh, from Total and heard her testimony at uh, some ministry event, a conference. So he got in touch with her and asked her if it would be all right to bring me through. Okay. So he, he picks me up. He tells me, yo, I just need you to come with me. Don't ask no questions. Um, I get in the car, we go for the stupid long drive and we pull up and it's this sister that comes out of the, the house and I'm like, bro, that look like old girl from Toto. That looked like Pam. Yeah. He's like, yeah. So I was like, yo, what the heck? And we, we sat in her living room and she started to witness to me. First, she asked a bunch of questions and she started sharing some things about the music industry. And at that time, you know, I already started to hear some of these things, you know, behind the scenes and kind of seeing some weird little creepy stuff, um, things that can be creepy. Like, yo, why are they closing the door and all the lights shut off? But you see this weird little glow under the door, like they're lighting candles. Like if they're praying before they perform, but who they praying to yeah. and why you got to do that in the dark. So, um, you know, Pam answered a lot of those questions without me even sharing that. She was like, yeah, they do this, they do that. So um, what she said really impacted me. Her testimony really impacted me. People think that Total fell off the mat and got dropped. She left. Total broke up because she left to serve Jesus. So they had just came off a successful yes. double platinum album. You know what I'm saying? I love me subtotal. Key yeah, me too. Asia still to this Pam. day. Yes. Yeah. That was, I still, yeah, I play them all the time. I mean, there's only like five or six songs that you can play. That you can play, yeah. <laughs> Kiss and you, there's a couple that I rock yeah. with hard, like they in yeah. the playlist. But, and especially that, you know, now I got this connection because Pam is, is the homie. So I'm like, oh, but yes, yeah, what? What she said really pierced my heart. Like, yo, I, it, it can only be the work of the Holy Spirit to make me realize, like, what, what would convict me? If I, don't, if I don't care, I don't care. Like, screw you, that's your story, you know, who cares? Yeah. But what she said, seeing that she had more than I had, I had these little pebbles in my hand. She had two handful of diamonds and she gave them up for Jesus. And I'm like, damn, I don't want to give this up for... You know, I got nothing compared to she has. Yeah. And she gave it up to follow Christ. Man, I, I'm, I might have to drop all this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you also mentioned that you were seeing a woman who was in a relationship. She was backsliding, but she was witnessing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Which I find, like... Well, she, she had, she was backslidden. And, okay. And she was living with her fiancés because they just, like, a, a, a personal situation happened in her household, so she had to leave, no place else to stay. She stays there. They end up moving in, and they both backslide. Okay. So, you know, I, there was always something different about her. Like, like she was real proper. She didn't curse, but she wouldn't talk to me about the Lord. I mean, she made it vocal that she believed in God, but the conversations about Jesus started when I really, it's like I almost fell into, like, a depression with the Lord pursuing me, him pursuing me was making me depressed. Like, cause I, I just was like, I wanted to be left alone. Yeah. So I remember just saying to her like, yo, I just feel like God is calling me. And she was like, yo, God is calling me too. And then started to preach the gospel. Like, yeah. and I was like, yo, you was a Christian? And she told me her whole testimony. She was like, yeah, I'm always ashamed of it. I backslid, you know, we backslid, we moved in together and, and yeah, I'm in this backslidden state, but I know the Lord is calling me and I want to come back. And her fiance at the time, he didn't want to come back to the Lord. Okay. So that was holding her back. So then, you know, the deal was what finally got me to go to church was she was like, yo, well, look, you can't come to church with me because they know my fiance. You know what I'm saying? They know us. Um, why don't you go to church and I'll go to church and we'll talk about how church went. Now, my boy, Lionel, who witnessed to me, was for years trying to get me to come. So now, mm -hmm. from just me trying to get some brownie points, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, if I go to church, it's a rat for dude. She definitely yeah. 
um, when I, I called him, he was super excited. And I had him pick me up that Sunday and went to church. So it's just, it's interesting that it seems like your relationships with women play a major part in just your story period because mm -hmm. we have her and then you fast forward 2014, you decide to God over money. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the album previous to this, um, hell in the hallway was all about your divorce. Yeah. So that is another woman that, I mean, at least played a, a major part enough to where you released an album and shared that testimony yeah. um, with what happened there. And um, I know that that has been super hard for you to be transparent and put that project out, but can you talk about how you putting that project out affected others and causing them to share their testimony with you? So I have other projects that, you know, I, um, I have, I can look at the stats, I can see the numbers excuse me, and um, I have projects that performed way better than that one, right? But with those projects performing well, even the one I just dropped, it's, it's less than a week. No, it is a week and a couple of days. And it's all, it's, in maybe another two weeks, it will have performed just as good and probably surpassed Hell in a Hall. So that's just to give you an idea. Here's context. Even with the numbers not being as high as the rest of my projects, the amount of, of emails, inboxes, people reaching out, the testimonies, oh, they, they outweigh by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Like thousands upon thousands of people have reached out. Sadly, thousands upon thousands of people, maybe 100,000 people at this point, oh, wow. uh, are going through the same thing and have reached out to, to share you know, like, yo, that album touched me. Uh, it, I, I, I can relate to the T. I went through the very same thing. So um, I, I can see the fruit of it. You know, you have your human your expectations and you like, man, I wanted to see it perform like this. But after you hear, I'm hearing all the testimonies and getting the feedback. I'm like, okay, I can see God's hand in this. You know what I'm saying? And for those who aren't familiar with the album, it's basically you went through a divorce and you were sharing the, the story and the process and just everything involving that, your feelings and just kind of working. Yeah, it, 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 so it, it definitely, there are four songs. So the, the album is a story. <clears throat> it, everything ties into each other. It's telling the story from the beginning, from when I wasn't divorced yet, signing papers, to when I, I moved out into my mom's house, to, uh, to the actual, I get to the depression, the struggles, to the actual, I, I, there's a song where I'm talking about, I, I'm leaving the court and we just, the divorce is official, um, to how I get out of this, this hell, the Lord sees me through it. Um, but I was intentional about putting together, like, if I take these songs and we're just to put them by themselves on a playlist, mm -hmm. would they still make sense? Mm -hmm. So where I actually talk about, you know it's about a divorce because of the songs in the beginning that may have set it up, but it's, it's really addressing that depression, that feeling down, that, that, that place of despair, you know what I'm saying? Um, so you don't have to just be going through a divorce or a breakup to relate to the album. If you're in this place where you're wondering Where's God? You feel like you've, you're you going through maybe a loss, a loss of any kind of death. Uh, you can definitely, uh, this album is definitely, it will be relatable to you. And I've also got testimonies about that where, yo, my marriage is actually great, but I was in this place of depression. And I, when I heard this song, it really touched me. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. That's cool. That's cool that you were transparent enough to put, put yourself out there and just see how it's, it's, was relatable to so many people. So. Yeah, yeah. There's times where, you know, and and definitely this question here is is no bother at all. But where the questions get too intimate, and and I, I you know, my my ex wife is still a, a human being. And, yeah. And I believe that she just went through a bad season. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's not like. I, I, I am always scared of will people write her off and, and put the scarlet letter on her as if, you know, she's just this person 24 hours, seven days a week. 
Um, she went through a bad season. We all go through it. I'm not exempt from going through it. As, as soon as I steer away from the Lord, if you're driving a car down a highway, you just jerk the steer wheel, steering wheel to the left a little bit, mm -hmm. everybody's dead in the car, yeah. maybe even other cars. So it just takes that little jerk to the left, a jerk to the right with the steering wheel. So I'm not going to be arrogant enough to, you know, I'm driving carefully and yeah. I pray I never jerk my wheel left or right. And I just think that that was it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a disappointment in her life, her not being able to get pregnant just caused her to be resentful and take it out on everyone. And, you know, there may be a day that, that you know, she's reconciled to the Lord. And I pray that people looking down on her or, or, or judging her doesn't prevent that from happening. Yeah. So I always consider like, man, ugh, I still think about that. In the beginning, I wouldn't talk about, even on the album, I don't mention an adultery because I didn't want anyone to, I wanted to be intentional about protecting people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My stepdaughter, her. So I didn't mention it. Now that it's out and everybody knows, it's like, all right, I'll say it in the interview, but on the album, I don't even really. Yeah. I give you hints. If you're listening, you'll know, oh yeah, she left him for a dude. But, um, you know, I didn't want to flat out. There was articles that were put, that were post, you know, uh, adultery, whatever. And I would make them take it down. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the maturity right there in your, your level. Especially, I mean, <laughs> it just seems like there's a lot of men in your situation that will just be like, F that B, da -da -da, you know, and just. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I felt like I. <laughs> Look, I think, you know, being 100% uh, transparent is like, yo, of course, I'm, I'm trying to be wise as I present myself before the public, you know, being a public figure. But behind the scenes, oh, I, I definitely felt like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the beginning. Yeah, of you know, The Lord had to work, had to work mm. on me. It was a, a process. Forgiveness it doesn't come easy. It, it was a process. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it really got on some old, like, yo. Not only bump her, bump the dude, bump yeah. everybody involved. Y'all all about to get this work. I'm about to beat somebody up. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, that For anyone listening that's going through that and feels like that, like just know it's normal, but don't act on it. Keep submitting those feelings, that depression, that frustration to the Lord. And he's faithful. He'll lift it off you. It just doesn't happen like in an instant. You know, yeah. Tinkerbell doesn't come with the wand and hit you and everything <laughs> magically changes. It's a process. But in yeah. that process, there's a lesson to be learned. It makes you stronger. Right on. And then we got a, a happy ending to that and new beginnings because now yes. you're in the yes. bed. Yes, yes. And we have a, another woman who's a major part of your story as well. So Fanny Plaza. Yep, yep. Okay. So um, let's. So let's talk about that because that was was that the end of last year or this year when did you get married i got married the end of last year october 2019 okay and the proposal it's online so anyone who wants to see that can see that you started yeah. it off with a lie told your yeah. <laughs> told her yeah. she was going to perform a song with you and it actually proposed to her so it was a good lie i was yeah, well, that was awesome that that was recorded um how did you guys even connect and meet? Um, so I went through my little ordeal in 2017. Now, um, work on the album, put it out in 2018. So when everybody got the album, people were like, I'm so sorry, but they don't know that I had been over it, been through the restoration yeah. process. I was already good at this point, single, divorced. Um, and uh, I had biblical grounds to be divorced. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stay single. Yeah. Um, but really wasn't looking. I really wasn't looking. Um, and when she, when I released Hell in the Hallway, um, the single, she heard it, could relate because she was, you know, before coming to Christ, she went through a pretty bad breakup with her child's father. And uh, she just reached out and was like, yo, that really touched me. It was, it was impactful. I can relate even all the way to the tattoo on the wrist. And, you know, I'm like, I was on beach mode. I seen her. I said, oh, hold up. How can I keep this conversation going? Yeah. Um, and, you know, she shared she shared that it had been a couple years that she'd been separated. So I'm like, okay, she's good to go. Let me see what's up. The conversation 
kept going and we were friends and then she showed up at uh my one of uh, my last tour stop in Orlando, Florida that year. And afterwards we just got something to eat and I ain't looked back ever yeah. since. Put a ring on that thing. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. And she's an artist as well, right? Spanish yes, artist? Is. Yeah, she's a Spanish artist. She does uh, Spanish Christian hip hop. That's awesome, man. And you're a stepfather. Again, she has a daughter? Yes, she does. Okay. Awesome. So now we are on to, we moved past Helena Hallway. You're married. Did I see that you were stuck on a cruise ship? During the yeah. beginning of this pandemic? Okay. Yeah. Well, we weren't stuck. It was, we could have been stuck on a cruise ship. It, we were just stuck for a day. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, someone got sick. That was on our honeymoon uh, two months back. Wow. So um, um, someone got sick and the, the COVID thing, this was at the, at the very tip top of that thing. You know, I don't even think it really hit the States like that yet. Okay. Maybe there were probably like four cases at this point. So then where were you guys at? We were on a cruise ship on the way to St. Thomas. Okay. And because of the, the, the scare on the ship, they wouldn't let us dock and somebody had to pull up. And so we were just stuck on the, on the boat for an extra day. We couldn't really do much. But thank God, you know, it turned out to be they weren't sick. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. And then, you know, I kind of want to explore, uh, since you were, we just talked about you getting married and just like dating. Just how dating looks different when you exit your 20s. Because <laughs> now you're dealing, you're dating people who may have been married, so have been divorced, have children, finances are more complicated than when you're in your, when you're in your 20s. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about just dating past 20s and how that looks? Oh, good question. I mean, I, I think... Dating in my 20s is, is how I ended up with a divorce under my belt. I, I tried to sanctify my habits. You know, I, I, I'm getting into a bunch of relationships. You could already see that women play a part of my testimony. Mm -hmm. um, and coming to Christ, I just wanted the same type of female I always had, but just went to church. Um, my priorities weren't all straight. And then, you know, I wasn't finished like becoming the adult that I would be. Yeah. Um, then now I'm left with trying to figure that, that mug out and it obviously didn't work. Um, now being in my thirties, uh, meeting this woman, I kind of, she's still in her twenties, you know okay. what I'm saying? Um, but I, I definitely came to this scenario, came to the situation knowing, having more of an idea of what I want and I've, I already have experience in being a husband. Um, mm -hmm. my, because of my past situation, you know, kind of being unequally yoked where, you know, I wasn't with a solid believer. Um, it forced me to really model Christ if I wanted to win my wife over. You okay. know? Um, I had to really model Christ, really be the priest of my household, really take a lot of crap. And now that, you know, I knew what not to look for and what to look for. I, I found that in my wife now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lot easier to model Christ when somebody's modeling Christ right back. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's so <laughs> much easier. I'm not naive and I'm not saying that my wife and I will never have a big blowout. I'm pretty sure I, I annoy her. But we've been together for, we've been together over a year and then married six months. Um, and we don't fight. We don't fight. Our, our, if I irk her, it's, we just talk it out. Like, and it's not the fake talk it out either. It's just like, yo, and we drop it. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with my age too. You know, the pr less pride in a way. Of yeah. course, we're still prideful. I'm still prideful, mm -hmm. but um, a lot less pride in a way where, I don't know, it's just functioning so smooth at this point. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations and prayers that it continues our way. And congratulations again on Hallelujah All Day, hitting over a million YouTube views. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that song still gets me. It just, that beat, it just, it has like that, that bounce. And then um, <laughs> you, there's just one line that always would just, 
killed me that you do. That's like just a really great representation of you, which I say it's like you're grimy for Christ. <laughs> is when you're like um poop on the bottom of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. That's the one I always does it at the show. <laughs> and um let's talk about the Shade 4 5 cipher. Yeah. How did that all come about? And you rep so well on that. That was like oh, yes, Dayton, yes. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> um it, it was a great experience. It was nerve wracking. Um it was probably one of the most nervous like the most nervous I've ever been was on 106 and Park. This was probably second to that. Okay. Um, because I just have such a bad memory with my rhymes. Okay. T today I put together a playlist with my features, and it was 47 features, and I left out about 20. You know okay. what I'm saying? So yeah. That's, uh, that's not including my body of work. Yeah. So it was so hard for me to remember my stuff that I got to obsessively practice to the point of a headache. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to screw this up. I'm going to mess this up. Um, and that's what I was nervous about. So what, how it happened was I, I put a little freestyle on Instagram and um, the, the DJ, DJ Amadeus, has a friend that's a believer and they mm. tagged him in it. Okay. So they was like, yo, you got to bring him up there. And yo, he hit me in the inbox. He was like, yo, you familiar with Shade 45? I'm like, <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, it's you know like 360 for you. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, of course. And he's like, yo, would you be willing to come up? And this was in January, a little bit before my birthday. And my wife was like, yo, like, I'm going to buy you the ticket for your birthday. Like, so you could go. Because he was, they don't pay your way. Yeah. It's like, yo, the opportunity's open. Good you luck. Gotta get there. <laughs> so, yeah, she bought me the ticket. I went up there. Um, I obsessively practiced. And, um... You know, they catch you off guard. You're in, they tell you to be there at a, at a certain time. It's, they really trick you because you're still there waiting for hours, mm -hmm. right? And as we're waiting for hours, let's say, just for example, I got there at like 9.30 in the morning and they're like, yo, we're going to get you in at 1.30. Okay. Like, <laughs> so we sitting there waiting. I'm practicing. I'm nervous. I'm pacing back and forth. P famous people coming in and out. and um. Then they just called me out the blue and caught me off guard. It was like 12.30. All right, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. You walk, you walk into the thing, put the headphones on, all right, go. So you just like, uh, and I was uh, praying like, God, please don't let me mess. I slurred a word too, no, nobody would catch that. I like, I slurred a word, but nobody would catch it. But still, I, I just wanted to make sure, like I think before, prior to coming to Christ, I would have been really concerned about impressing everybody there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it's so freeing to not give a crap with anybody there thought. Yeah. I did not care. I didn't care who liked me. I wasn't disappointed that the dude next to me was rapping by, I'll shoot you, I'll kill you, blah, 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 blah. And shout out to him. He was cool. But you know what I'm saying? The content yeah. was just the same old. And... um. They was giving him, like, uh, uh, who's my man that was there? Um, Uncle Murder. Uncle Murder was giving him more love. I'm, I'm with these complex uh, multi-syllable rhyme schemes and punchlines. And, but, yo, I didn't let that bother me. Later yeah. on, I, I, I laughed at that. Like, yo, that's mad funny. But while I was there, I was like, yo, I want to rep Christ. It was, if that was my first joint. Like, yo, God, I want to rep Christ. I want to definitely show believers that we can be in this space, right? right? That was number two. And number three, I needed the footage to come out good so I could share it on the ground. <laughs> like, that's it. I really ain't care about what anybody else yeah. does. Um, and it, that was freeing. That was, yeah. it was so freeing. Like, yo, man, this is the best. When you ain't here to impress nobody. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to mess up because I didn't want to make CHH look bad. It wasn't even for my ego and my pride. I said, yo, if I mess this thing up and I make us look bad up here, not too many of us get the opportunity to come yeah. up here. You know what I'm saying? On that particular show, I'm the only Christian rapper that ever went up there. On Shade 45, you got Social Club, Cray, Andy, KB. But I was like, yo, I got I to gotta rep. Thank yeah. God. He spared move. And you did. You repped. And, um, I mean, just the fact that it was Shade, <laughs> it's Eminem's. You know, yeah. you you were trying so hard to get signed to his label, and now, what? 
almost like a decade later, needed to be on Shade 4 or 5. <laughs> I think, wait, Shade, when Shady, my dealings with Shady were 2005 to 2006. So yeah, more than a decade. Wow. And I'm back, you know, rapping. It's That's crazy. God. God, yeah. God is hilarious. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. So how has uh, this COVID been affecting you um, as far as music goes and like touring and, and anything? Yeah. <laughs> as far as music goes, I've been able to write a lot more. That's, okay. that's good. You always want time to settle down and write. But uh, going to the studio, of course, is, that ain't happening to yeah. record it. I got a little setup, but I hate my setup and I hate recording myself. I'd rather pay somebody else to do it. Yeah. Um, and then it just stopped everything. Everything. The flow of finances from music has stopped. Um, of course, little royalty checks come from, you know, God over money stuff as far as music. But, you know, streaming, you don't make no money. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a whole bunch of one-offs ready to go. Um I had a, a show in the Cayman Islands. Oh, what? Yes, in the Cayman. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> yo, deposit, everything. Like, it was official. It wasn't no, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They sent the deposit. They, they, they had the hotel book. They were promoting it. I said, yo, it's on. Stop all of it, everything, <laughs> everything. So, um, yeah, it's just been rough. It's been rough. I see that you do have hope that the Invasion West Coast tour may still happen. I hope <laughs> so. That. I, I highly doubt it, but um, I'm hoping. You know I hope so, saying? too, because you're scheduled to come to SAC, <laughs> to yeah. come to my hometown, so that'll oh. be dope. Um, but, I mean, if not, I'm sure it'll, it'll come back. Yeah, we'll push it back. Yeah. And... How does God's presence in your life look like personally, like your personal, like not talking music, we'll talk music some more later, but personally, how does God look, his presence look? Uh, it's definitely a very different new season for me right now. Um, being linked to someone who has their own relationship with the Lord, she has her, her own relationship it's not me pushing her it's at times she pushes me we'll push mm -hmm. each other we're youth leaders at our church okay now we play we're on the leadership board at our church wow. so um it, it's experiencing god in a different in different areas these are things that i've never done before you know youth leader now you're depending upon god to do different things it's not just minister to music now it's, it's I'm, I'm doing life with kids you yeah. know what i'm saying um and the same thing now assisting my pastors assisting the other people on the leadership team um it's been really 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 dope since i moved to florida um i I got plugged into a church right away, was a member there for years. Um, but after that, after my, my divorce, after moving away, uh, I haven't been a member at any church. Just okay. been lingering around, you know, visiting different spots. So believe it or not, you know, you have people that preach that you don't need church to be saved. Of course, I agree. But it, it, it takes a toll on your walk a little bit. You know, you become a nomad. Yeah. And when you become a nomad and you're a loner, like, yo, you're, you're, it's open season on you with the enemy. You know, people may disagree, but th this is just my experience. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, getting plugged back into a church with my wife, serving, has been definitely, it's edifying to us and my spiritual world. Uh, serving edifies me. So it's not like uh, I even, you know, for instance, Bible study, I'm not even listening to the, the, the pastor's uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah, my wife and I are teaching the class. But still, even that, now getting into our word to teach also yeah. does something for, for yourself. You know, you're, you're reading the word from a different perspective now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been a really good season with the Lord. Oh, well, that's cool. And I definitely agree. I mean, you need to be plugged in somewhere, even – if you're not necessarily plugged into a church, but if you're plugged into a Bible study or a life group, as long as you're doing life with 
a group of, you know, like-minded people, God-fearing people, then, then that's what, that's really what feeds us. Otherwise you do, you feel like a nomad just wandering around and you don't have that. So, so there may be someone just attending church regularly. And I would say to them, get plugged in. Cause when mm-hmm. I was in Ocala, Florida at my mom's house, there was this really dope church. Sermons were A1, it was solid, but I, I didn't connect. Mm-hmm. I walked right in, nobody noticed me, I walked right out. Um, of course I had fellowship over the phone. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, there's it's something different. about, yeah. like there's that unexplainable thing that when the word says, when two or three have gathered together in, in my name, I am there in their midst. Like, He's there. You know what I'm saying? We know that he's already in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. But something happens when believers gather together in his name. Yes. And you're plugged in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. For sure. It's definitely. And it's not just for you. It's for every, all parties involved. It's like you're all just feeding each other. It's this whole cycle, this circle. Yeah, amen. Um, all right. So let's get into the music. So I have this new segment called the four song breakdown and it's where the artist raps or recites a verse and discusses the song. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if you saw that part of the email, but there were four songs that I chose for you. Okay. I know you just talked about not having all your, your verses memorized. Let's go for it. We're going to try this thing. We're going to work it out. But the four songs are We Fight, Snot Rag, Hall of Martyrs, and Wake Up. Okay. Which one are we going with first? If we could start with We Fight, Color Purple with uh, 1K Few and Wande. You can just choose a verse from there and we'll discuss that song. I said, uh, oh, I said, uh, they're all in my face with their hate and aggression. And it's putting my faith to the test and I can stop and catch a fade, it is tempting. But God is loving what made from his essence. He equipped us and gave us a weapon, using love as a way of deflecting all the hate that they will spray my direction. Instead of catching a fade, I will bless them, yeah. We fight hate with love and that makes us dangerous because we kill them all with kindness, fully loaded, aim and bust. We fight fear with faith because we're all fearless and brave. We're not scared of all your threats. We will not run, we're here to stay. Uh, we fight lies with truth. This Bible's tried and true inside this jewels that can guide a fool to Christ. My life's the proof. My mind's renewed with insight and views. These vipers blind the youth, disguising clues, and they try to hide that Jesus died for you. Yeah, the devil fights tooth and nail, but in the end, truth prevails so you can tell him you have been doomed to fail. You choose to refute truth and tell. You too do what you do, rebel. Or you lose because it's so new, you well. New screw like I'm cool, cool, I yell. Shoot, fool, he rebukes you to hell. Truth win. Right, yes. Yeah. Once we fight. Um, <laughs> so it's we fight and then in parentheses, it's color purple. <laughs> that's a reference that <laughs> pretty much, that's like a black people reference. Who came up with one K few man. He, uh, I I give this dude. I I, to, I hit few up. I told him. I gave him the concept, and I said, "Look, man, stick to this. Stick to that. You know, the song is called We Fight." And then I get the hook back, and he like color purple had to fight all my life. I'm like, "Yo, what am I gonna do with this, bro? Like, this ain't even the concept." He's like, "Nah, his management's like, yo, nah, this fire." And I have reached out to one day to be on the record. So I guess when, when Phil was recording it, one day was in the studio too. Okay. So he sends me his verse and I'm like, I'm trying to like, yo, I, I don't know if I could use this. And one day hits me right there. Like, yo, I love what Phil did. I want to be on it. So I'm like, <laughs> I send it to Biz and the Bizzle. And I'm like, yo, what you think about this? And Bizzle's like, yo, you better use that. That joint is fire. So I was thinking about using this hook for a bridge. Okay. Um, because it just wasn't my ideal. I even yeah. had somebody else take a shot at, at the hook too. I'm not gonna say who, cause I might use it for the remix cause it's fire. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then when one day sent her verse back with the melodies over uh, Fuse hook, I said, oh yeah, I'm keeping this joint. Yeah. Yep, uh, looks like it's, we fight color purple. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm about to call it. Cause okay. she killed it. 
I had a feeling it had to be one of them. I'm like, that's definitely, that's a black people reference. Yeah, oh, don't, don't, I color purple. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm super familiar with it because the color purple is my mother's favorite movie. Okay. Yeah, so right away I was like, okay, I get, I get it. You know what I'm saying? And why the whole concept of the song, like you had a vision in your mind when you sent it to him and what was that vision? So I wanted to express, uh, you know, I, I, I hate, I hate that I've allowed or maybe behaved in a certain way, being the whole, like, even you was like, yo, you, 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 uh, gutter for Christ. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, I, I don't want to be seen as that no more. And it's always like, yo, I, I see the jokes and the jokes be like, hey, well, don't say that to Dayton because he'll mess around and flip. And I'm like, nah, I'm not that dude no more. I don't want to be. And just in in that thought, I thought, nah, I fight fear with faith. I fight hate with love. I fight, I fight lies with truth. That's what I fight with. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, that's what we should all inspire, aspire to do. Fight fear with faith, lies with truth, fight hate with love. That's the only fighting we should yeah. do. So that's where the concept came about. But I mean, you can still do it with your dope vocabulary. I mean, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm so it's fine to, to be good in speech. I'm from <laughs> yeah. Jersey. This I grew up talking like this, but the whole them yeah. thinking that I'm a Christian and I'll swing on you. Yeah, I, I fail. I failed if everybody thinks that. Got you. I'm like, yo, where y'all got? I never threw a fit on, on social media. Never. I don't know where they get this from. <laughs> Okay, so and we got my nephew in the back just going ham right now with the crying. But um, let's do snot rag. Okay, I said um, I am just puzzled. I don't understand all this crap you record. How this crap you recording can sell? We talk about coke that you're snorting and lean that you're pouring is boring and corny as hell. You ninjas full of yourselves. You claim to be God. Even if you had Maury himself tell me that you are the father, I tell him to shut up. I don't believe stories you tell. Yeah, you go to the dealer and you drop bags. Then you hit the mall up and you pop tags. You get all the ladies because you got cash. To the Lord, all your riches are a snot rag. Whoa, it's murder, murder, murder when you drop tracks. So the minds of your listeners are rock fast. But you think you're good because you give a lot back. To the Lord, all your deeds are a snot rag. Uh. Whether on boom bap or cheesy beats, I will eat these in seats easily. Just keep on feeding me. I have been spazzing since CDs and DVDs way before my fans were streaming me. You're just a jit with boo boo stains in your BVDs. Why would you try to compete with me? I'm throwing fits because I'm starving. I need the feast. You will become meat between my teeth, homie. This shit. Yes. <laughs> I'm impressing myself. I can't believe I remember these joints. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> um. I just, I love the, I've been spazzing since CDs and DVDs way before fans were streaming me, fans were streaming me. Um, <laughs> what, you're just a jit wet poo-poo stays in your beef? Poo-poo <laughs> stays in your beef. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then just the image of all your riches being a snot rag to God, like, it's just, that's major. Like, <laughs> When I first heard like the title, I'm like, what is he, what, what is this song going to even be about? It's not That's like, what I wanted to do. Like, I was like, yo, let me pick the most, <laughs> the weirdest title in the world. Because the beat is so goofy. and It's not the traditional beat you're going to hear me rap on. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I'm going to call, I, I, I didn't even have the, um, like I didn't write anything. I was like, yo, I'm going to call this joint Snot Rag and just write a song about how you know, the Lord says that our deeds are but filthy rags. I'm like, yo, before him, your deeds and your riches are, mean nothing. Yeah. Well, that is um, is nasty. I don't want to be God's snot rag. <laughs> I know, oh, that's yeah. nasty. <laughs> um, let's move on to Hall of Martyrs, which you have a whole gang of people <laughs> on yeah. that song. A whole bunch of artists I wanted to work with. And Ruslan even produced it. Yeah. I was, yeah. I didn't even realize Ruslan was producing like that. But um, yeah, let's do something from Hall of Martyrs. I said, uh, see if my options were the night of father or I'm a goner. 
Then I'd be forced to choose and say goodbye tomorrow. It is sayonara. It's not because I want to die or would invite the horror. It's because I know to die a martyr is the highest honor. I don't know why you bother to threaten my life because all you do is make it worse. See, when our blood is shed, the bride is stronger. We, you can't divide and conquer. Martyrdom's a fire starter that will start a flame. That'll spread a flame wide and farther, multiplying morals. His knights in shining armor will die for ours. It's kind of sort of like what Leonidas did in his fight for Sparta. We do not like the drama, but Christ has called us to follow him, even if that means submitting our lives to slaughter. So whether it's imprisonment and ball and chains, or I'm staring down the barrel of a 44 and bang, I understand the live is Christ, the die is more than gain. For his name, I will gladly join the Hall of Martyrs slain. Yeah. So that track is like is one of my favorite tracks on that album. Probably was one of my favorite tracks of this year. Period. Um, it's just that's a classic. That's like that should be like <laughs> CHH history right there. Um, why even make that song and decide to throw like everyone on it? Um. So honestly, the idea just came from I started this T-shirt. Uh, collection called the Hall of Martyrs collection and uh, you know just really uh, trying to I'm having a conversation with Bizzle I promise this all ties in having a conversation with Bizzle and I'm like man I need some merch for the tour and I don't know what to make and he just says the simplest truth bro just pray about it and I'm like word so I, I pray and I'm like God I need an idea but I want it to be just not so I cash in I want it to be just something that's on your heart, something that, that, that's on my heart, something that would, would witness, you know, to people. And just what's always been on my heart is just the, the people in the West who are dying for this faith, like in Nigeria. I, I stay really plugged into what's going on. Um, and so Hall of Martyrs, ain't, and I ain't out here talking about like I'm getting beheaded, I'm getting beat up or persecuted. This is more an anthem for them. I remember listening to hip hop and you know people rapping their life but i would rap it in the mirror like, like if it were my words you know what i'm saying and this was meant to encourage them so now as i'm ruslan sends me the beat i make the shirts um ruslan sends me the beat and i'm trying to figure out what to do with it i'm hitting him up like, like yo man i can't think of anything what what can you think of something and he's brainstorming and i'm doing this as i'm folding my shirts to ship out and I'm like, wait a minute, man, why don't we call this joint Hall of Martyrs? You know, I made these t-shirts, it was inspired by this. Why don't we give it a song? He was like, bro, let's do it. So I know how SO feels about this. He's been vocal about this. So I immediately thought of SO. Um, and uh, immediately thought of Uncle Reese just because he has that whole anthemic, that, that, that big voice. Um, I reached out to Drew Bex to sprinkle some stuff in my man John Paul, too. So that's how the song came about. Dope, dope. And the next song, Wake Up. Wake Up. I said, can't tell me nothing. Dog hip-hop's ran by the Ku Klux. Way back, they was tying the noose up. Now they've been on some new stuff. To kill us, they will use us. They give a poor boy a few bucks, tell him preach hate and induce lust and abuse drugs on his new cut. They make sure that he looks like us, so it's somebody you trust. But little do you know he's sent by the ops to screw the minds of the youth up. They put the big bag on him knowing that his words are going to drive you nuts. Yet they work hard to keep the mouths of the ones that'll tell the truth shut. It's their fault. Look at these streets. They keep the cycle on repeat. See, the more we support them, the more we're walking right into defeat. We're here to fight, we we'll retreat. We so life, so we reap peace. We speak the holy word of God because we're trying to wake them up out of the deep sleep. Yeah. Oh. Um, now that first line is just that's like sh straight to the gut <clears throat> with yeah. um, hip hop being ran by the Ku Klux. Kept me off a lot of playlists. Mm. A lot of playlists. Mm, for real. Like, Why didn't put my joint on? I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, y'all really? like that Ku Klux line, yo. Okay, okay. Mm, well, why why put a song in there then or that line in there if it can possibly keep you off playlists? I mean, what's what's the mm. goal? The playlist, or or that's what a, you know a we fight is for something, mm. or, or expressing what God put on my heart when I heard the beat. Like, yo, it's something that. So when I I, I took in um, I spit it on on the gram a couple months back, 
that verse to the beat. And uh, I did a little promotion behind it to make sure it reached non-believers, right? Uh, target, my, that was my target audience. Mm -hmm. And the feedback I got from non-Christians, I was clicking on their pages, oh. checking. It was oh, crazy. They could yeah. agree. They could agree. And, it, and then it's like, I got good feedback from other rappers who be rapping that stuff. Who, are, yeah. who I'm talking about. Yeah. And they like, yo, this real ish, bro. Like, cursing on my joint. Like, yo, I love this. And I'm like, yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> Those are the best. The best compliments come from the ones with, with, with cuss words. I know. You're reaching somebody different. <laughs> for real, for real. Okay. I f with this. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the actual album. So we have C H A H Ain't Dead Volume One. Um, actually, before we get into the album, it was released under Menace Movement mm -hmm. and not God Over Money. Yeah, so um, I'm still an artist on, on GOM. Um, I have my own label to put other people out. Um, I made this promise, you know, that if you trace way back, then you know how this whole thing, the ideal started with the CHH Ain't Dead. I made this promise to do this compilation album. And, uh, you know, my next album scheduled on GOM is, is uh, the new art. So okay. I keep on changing plans on biz. Like I, I was supposed to do the new arc and I gave him the Menace mixtape. Then mm -hmm. I was supposed to hit, do the new arc and I gave him Hell in the Hallway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now here goes this joint with all these people and all of that just from, from a business aspect, from publishing, distributing, publishing. This is something that GOM, it would be hard for them to deal with. So I released it through... Uh, to my my label, um, there'll be two volumes, and then when I do my next solo project, it'll be you know on G O M. Okay, and your label, so Menace Movement, you have a uh, Stefanano on it. Yep. You have yep. anyone else? I do, and I'll be announcing somebody in maybe two to three weeks. The next okay. artist, yeah, I gotta. My roster's already full. Like I have people on the side just waiting for their shot. Um, at this point, you know, I'm looking or hoping in the near future to sign someone who is already kind of established. I'm already in talks with, with, uh, you know, some investors and stuff like that. But right now I'm giving people that I've admired for a long time. I've known, I love their music and I'm just like, dag, if they only got the chance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now here I come. That's that. I started this label for them. Okay. So you know, I'll be rolling out another artist or two really soon. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And then why CHH ain't dead? Why even title it? Why that whole theme and concept? Oh, uh, it, it was. I don't. You don't see anybody making claims like that right now. But when I. I thought of the idea of doing it. First, I released a single titled CHH Ain't Dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like just me venting. I seen a, uh, a tweet from someone just claiming that Christian hip hop is dead. And I had just came off tour and I, I was definitely offended by it because mm -hmm. like, yo, for you to make those claims, you're claiming that the, the Lord is not moving in this thing still. Where forget turnouts at shows, forget uh, admirers. There's people coming to know Jesus Christ through, they're hearing the gospel. They're coming to know him through rap, through hip hop, through Christian hip hop. So you definitely can't make that claim. You're disrespecting the Lord and you're disrespecting his laborers. So I was tired of seeing tweets like that and posts like that from people that were bitter. You know, they didn't get the shot they wanted. Mm -hmm. So they gave a middle finger to CHH and then turned around was like, it's dead. So, you know, I just was like, yo, y'all not going to say nothing about this? Yeah. Okay, so hold up. I'm, I'm going to have to step up and say something. So I released the record. Um, I went in on it probably a little too much. And then immediately after I do this challenge, and I get 1,200 submissions for this challenge. Okay. It went, it went crazy. And, and I, <laughs> I, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. 
um, and in, not only were these newcomers, dope newcomers, uh, submitting these verses, I had like, you know, no malice and, and just all these heavyweights, Brian Trejo, everybody making the submissions. I was like, yo, this challenge right here is proof that CHH ain't dead. Like it's proof. Look at yeah. how many of us came out. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I'm gonna make a compilation and I'm gonna give all these new people that were super dope a try and put them on records. And that's how this came about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and you literally have like just generations of artists. Yeah. I mean, you have the godfather of Christian hip hop, Michael Peace. Yeah. Like, what was the, the decision to put him on the album? So I'm on a treadmill and I'm, you know, listening to the song and I'm like, man, what greater, there would be no better cosign as far as, of course, you know, people better know the Lord, of course, <laughs> but I'm talking about on earth, there would be no better human cosign than the first Christian rapper. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No better cosign. So I'm thinking, man, he wouldn't want to be involved. I, I, I make some connections to DJ Wado, then to Marcus Hall, and he hooks me up with Mike Peace. And he was familiar with the ministry. He was already familiar with the music. Okay. He was a fan. I, you know, and I did my research. I'm a hip hop baby. So as soon as I got involved in CHH, I did the very same thing I did when I, I got into secular music. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I'm, I'm, generations after run DMC and all that stuff. But I, I went and did my research, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I did that with CHH, found out about Michael Peace, found out about uh, Stephen Wiley and all that. I, I tried to get Stephen Wiley too. I just got to connect to him now. I couldn't get it before. But I, I definitely so wanted two. Mike Peace. What was that? So maybe volume two? Yeah, oh no, there's volume two. That's I know, I'm saying, but well, maybe he, he's gonna be on volume two. I then. hope so. If he come <laughs> through for me, Mike Peace came through, and yeah, man, to have the first Christian rapper was huge for me. For me, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, yo, praise God. And then his, uh, his shout out, like, that he gave to you, how did that affect you? Oh, man, I was acting like a little schoolboy, like, yo, to hear, yo, hip-hop is like, I love hip-hop. It's not an idol in my life, but I, I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's changed my life. It's changed my life big time. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm a hip-hop baby. So to come in, into this, and now it's like, yo, CHH is my, my baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to have the dude who paved the way say that this album, when they speak of HH history, that this album needs to be talked about. That's a little pat on the back from God. Like, yeah. 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 He don't need to gas me, but he's just like, hey, here you go. You, you, you spot on. I was like, man, praise God. Well, I mean, the whole album in its entirety was just well put together. And even from like the selection of choosing where to place the songs um, <clears throat> and how you had, like I said, every generation from the originator to everyone to the newer cats, like people I don't even know. Um, but I also liked, I was a little, I was, I was a little disappointed to see that Truth was on an album. <laughs> On a record, yeah, he didn't I, rap. I know that's if there's one thing I regret <laughs> not asking him to, to to spit because if I, as a fan, as being the biggest true fan <laughs> in the world, I'm even when I played, I'm like, dang, I see featuring and he don't rap on it, kind of sucks. But here's why so that's another like the two special parts about the album for me one, having my piece, two. Now, on that song, mm -hmm. I'm talking about my introduction to CHH. Um, and he's my introduction to yeah. CHH. It okay. wasn't Michael Peace. It was, it was the truth. Yeah. They took me to a show. I told this in, in my testimony story with you. They took me to a show, and it's the freaking truth rapping. And I had already been familiar with him because my man was playing me and stuff. And I was blown away, blown away. He was the first dude to plant seeds. Mm -hmm. He he made the album that I was freaking heathen, probably dumb high, go, going to clean my room. And just because I liked his wordplay, I throw on the faith. And it was planting seeds. Yeah. So 
to, to I needed him to talk on that. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, it was, me. Yeah, it was cool how you did it though. <laughs> I'm not like not dissing the song or anything. I just I thought he was gonna rap and then I hear the whole thing and I'm like, okay, but it was cool how you were flowing and then it was like this little interlude, like almost jazz poetic type, I don't know, <laughs> like him speaking over it and just talking about Christian hip hop. And I loved how he said that it's in its awkward puberty phase and that it's not dead, it's just in transition. Yeah, and yeah. I thought that was just like the perfect analogy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so dope, it was so dope. I was like, ah, oh. one take, that's one take truth right there. I ain't have to hit him like, yo, could you say, or yo, could you add, he did it. I said, I love it. You sure? I'm like, good to go. It's perfect. So he heard the song and then he came up with what he was going to say over it? Yeah, I asked him to speak on it. Um, it was already recorded. I sent it in to him and, and uh, first I asked him if he would be down. Mm -hmm. And I had my fingers crossed, like, please say yes, please. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. Send it. I said, Praise oh. God. Yep. And I mean, CHH. It's in this transition, but it also seems like the artists are more, like, we're everywhere. We're not just in this little, like, we're over here, Christian hip hop's right over here. It's like, no, we're, like, sprinkled. We're, doors have been opened. We're in bigger venues. We're in the secular venues. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I can go to a, to a bar and see a Christian hip hop artist now. Yeah, yeah. And I personally, I think all of it's dope. I mean, you go to large festivals and you have artists who maybe aren't claiming they're Christian hip hop anymore, but their music is Christian, like like your Xavier Omar. Like, yeah, um, man, I think there's space for all of it. I love it all. Just just don't diss each other. Like, yeah, yeah. I hate when the over the 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 super C H H dude be like. Yo, ah, man, see, he don't rap about the, from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. He's a heathen. Like, nah, bro. Like, he's, he's talking about life from his Christian worldview. Yeah. It's not, it's not addressing the, the church to edify the body. It's probably like, yo, like barbershop talk. Let's be mm -hmm. real, man. You don't talk about, when you're in the barbershop, when you're amongst friends, we have time for Bible study. And sometimes it'd be great when the word comes up and we talk about accountability. Then there's times we talk about sports or fighting or marriage or relationship or politics. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Through that Christian worldview. Yes. So um, I believe there's space for all of it. So as people, I don't want to be crowned the spokesman for CHA the poster child. But as I do step up and speak up for this thing, I, I am always saying like yo don't diss those cats but then i don't want them to diss us either exactly then you might get a diss record no i'm just kidding <laughs> but yeah just don't diss us and you know like yo there's there's room for all of us and we should all support each other right on i agree preach right there um and then how does god's presence in your life look musically musically so what i'm trying to do more is like I was thinking about this today as I wrote a verse, I'm like, a lot of times I'm finding myself drifting away from, from praying before I write, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Where, where it's just a lot of, like, I know how to do this. I know the word, you know, it's in my heart, it comes out. And I don't, you know, you don't have to get over religious, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, but me right now, just intentionally, as I started to write this rhyme today, I thought, God forgive me. Give me the words. You guide me. Keep me out of the way. You know what I'm saying? I want to be more intentional about doing that. That that's how God has his presence has been in my music lately. Like that. Just involving him in it all. Like if any one of these lines, there's there are lines that I'll hear and I'll be like, Ugh, I want to said that. That that was a little bit of that was more of me than God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With that with the with the I'm nice and I'm you know, there's bars like that on CHH ain't dead that I'll be like, mm. and then you know, on the back in the ring joint. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite verses mm -hmm. I ever wrote, but even when I li listen back, I'm like, man, I wouldn't have said that right now in this season. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Electrifying. It's like when the son of Odin is fire it's fire, but it's like, mm. like I was boasting. Yeah. So 
I just want to get me out of the way and just invite God to, to, even if it sounds corny to me, it's like, yo, I'm going to trust him. If I feel a peace about it, I'm just going to allow him to spirit the right. But that's the hard part because part of rap is boasting, right? Yeah, that's like one yeah. of the features, one of the characteristics of it. So how do you... Yeah, but that's the thing. So are, are we going to... We can use it to boast, but boasting him. You know what I'm saying? Boasting yeah. him. Um, I think, man, it's just... I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but like my favorite rhymes to, to write be just for, you know, it's just like, like when you got a basketball in your hand and you just go to the court and you shoot and or you want to play. It's yeah. competitive, right? So I like the whole punchline, multi-syllable, challenging myself. That joint is the most fun and I'm good at that joint. You know what I'm saying? So, but I just got to check the motive behind it. Yeah. Is it now look at me, look how good I am at, at this or like, am I really trying to go and fight the Lord? So with that particular song, I let it slide. I got a former wrestler on that joint. They want to see him back in the ring. They want to see me back in the ring as far as battle rap. Yeah. Yo, let's get back in the ring and mash out on this record. So. And he's so, okay. I didn't have the time. I didn't actually look him up, but he's a former um, wrestler. WWE but, wrestler. Yeah. But obviously he raps now because he's a beast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he been rapped. He <laughs> okay. always he always rapped. Um, okay. It's just he's taking his music career more seriously. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's he's going in and his music is amazing. Okay. He's sending me stuff. I'm like, yo, this dude's beast. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up everything I have. Is there anything that you want to add or anything you want to plug? Uh, CHH Ain't Dead, Volume 1 is out now. Get it. Volume 2 will be coming, God willing, in the summertime. Keep me in prayer. When I finish this joint, it's the top of the summer. Uh, there's a God Over Money album in the works. There's Bizzle's album dropping May 22nd. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please subscribe to our show. And if you really enjoy the content, please leave a review. It really does help with the ranking. For all things testimony, visit testimonystories.com. Until next time, I'm Gilika Brown, the music lover constantly seeking positive music.